welcome to the second edition of the Femina Grazia Virtual Beauty Carnival. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. I think most of us know her because she's always doling out tons of skincare advice for us on Instagram. Um, very happy to introduce uh, cosmetic physician Dr. Gitika Mittal, who's here with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Hina. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so, like we've the, the reason that I'm here today with you is because, like, like we mentioned, there's tons of skincare advice floating around on the internet. Um, you have bloggers, influencers, and beauty writers like me who uh, happily write tons about this subject. But I firmly believe there's nothing more uh, precious and correct than advice that comes from an actual expert. Uh, so to begin with things, can you take me through a little bit about the basics of skincare. What do you think we need to take care of considering most of us now have become DIY experts? Mm -hmm. Of course, the basics of skincare is very important. And of course, there's tons of knowledge available all over. So when we come to the basics, we start with the basic routine of cleansing the face. When we talk about cleansing, it is not only important in the morning, but it is also important at night. But the benefits of both the time cleansing is different. In the morning, it is more to remove all the dirt, sebum that is collected on your face. And at night, it is more so to remove all the pollution, all the makeup residues from the face. So many times, even now, I see patients walking into my clinic and they say, oh, we don't wash our face in the morning. We think that the natural oil is good for our skin. But that oil and sebum is actually going to clog your pores and later on lead, uh, lead to acne and blemishes and whatnot. So first is the basic, most cleansing, which is important. Second of all, is it's important not to over exfoliate the skin. With tons of DIYs floating around, people are doing so much exfoliation. So exfoliation can be both physical and chemical in nature. Physical exfoliants is with the scrubbing material that we use like basin, multani, mitti packs. And chemical is more with the acids like AHAs, VHAs. And if you over exfoliate your skin, you're actually doing harm to the skin. The natural flora of the skin is getting removed, which leaves your skin more sensitized. So second of all, no over exfoliation. Third, it's very important to change your skincare routine as per the season, like how we change our wardrobe. Because yeah. in the summer, your skin needs to be more uh, using more foamy face washes, less of moisturizer sometimes because the summer you're already sweating out too much, switching to a sunblock, which is sweat resistant and using lots and lots of vitamin C, which is not only going to photo protect your skin, but it will also remove the early signs of sunspots. And in winters, we know need more hydration. We need more hyaluronic acid. We need more peptides in our moisturizing routines so that our skin care barrier is maintained. And last of all, never ever underestimate the importance of good food because no matter what, uh, our food always plays a very important role. What you're inside will always show on the outside. So food, staying happy, staying fit is all in all very important. Yeah, the last one is I think where most of us struggle. Most of us have <laughs> built 11, 12, 13 step routines, but we forget the basics, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So beauty is not easy. It's more holistic in nature and you have to do the entire 360 degree. So, um, I mean, coming to the point of the whole of last year, I mean, I don't even need to remind anybody how tough it was. Um, but I feel like a lot of us have become very particular about skincare. Maybe because yeah. we had a lot of time on our hands, maybe because it felt uh, made us feel good. Uh, Tell me what was your experience like with uh, clinics shut down? I'm sure you have received a lot of SOS calls. I know there was a point where I reached out and I'm like, I need help. Uh, so in your experience, what are the common concerns that people have had and how have you sort of uh, advised them to address it? Okay, so during the lockdown, I saw a lot of people breaking out with stress acne. So mask acne is of course one which we are seeing now because people are going out and wearing masks more and more but yeah. stress acne was something that we were seeing a lot mm -hmm. people tend to underestimate what is stress they some generally feel you have to be really stressed out at work which means a stress but even with something new as covid and sitting at home and managing work managing children managing home is also stress or not getting enough sleep is also stress which releases hormones in your body, which further increases the sebum secretion in the skin. So your skin tends to get more oily, you end up breaking out in rashes and acne. So stress acne was one major thing we saw. Mm. 
and second of all we saw a lot of patients coming to us with hair fall because that is again a thing which happens with stress you tend to start having a lot of acne on your face you tend to start having a lot of hair fall so these were the two most important things of course there were people some people who were getting more fitter in the lockdown and some people who were getting more the fat. lucky ones yes so th- <laughs> yeah. that was another thing but um, two most important skin or hair concerns were stress acne and of course hair fall fair enough um and do you have any tips on dealing with this kind of stress acne or do you do you suggest that it's more holistic so balance it so out so now thankfully the stress acne has been overtaken by mask acne mask. but stress generally we have to understand what is the reason of stress first of all and we have to remove that very reason which is causing the stress so if you understand that the conditions are such that you have to deal with it then try to find out what can relieve that stress maybe a little bit of you know work out in the morning or maybe a little bit of um, you know dancing with your kids or maybe just cooking what you like so try to do more activities which release good hormones that is important and then always seek help of a dermatologist to get some local applications that you can do safely at home there are a yeah. lot of antibiotic creams which are clindamycin nadoxin adapalene which has a uh, very good ingredients which you can always use at home to remove the acne spots even benzoyl peroxide can be safely used on the skin so you can always keep these things handy and second of all with stress acne you should make sure that you don't get too stressed to start binging on sugar because that is a vicious cycle again Then if you add on too much sugar, yeah if you're adding sugar to your diet you will not only get more stress acne, acne but you will also start having insulin sensitivity your skin will start is showing more signs of aging so do look at your diet so start removing all those factors like late night eating and especially binging on the tubs of ice cream or chocolates is not going to do you any good and i know it does feel very susceptible to it especially while watching netflix right yeah yeah so that's important so removing the stress factors doing something some things that make you happy third using your local applications like benzoyl peroxide salicylic acid or nadoxin clindamycin they always help and fourth of all no binging on extra sugar or alcohol because that is just going to make the situation even more worse but now that things have started opening up in you know it's really easy to in fact go to a clinic which is covid safe and following the precautions you can indulge in some treatments which are salicylic acid as an aging ingredient like hydrofacial salicylic acid beads peels and then there are photofacials which are ipl based lasers which can also help in reducing the acne you can always choose to get those done nice um speaking i mean it's interesting that you should mention benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid these are things usually that we've you know we only used to hear it inside a dermat's clinic but yeah. now um thanks to tiktok and thanks to instagram and reels it's all over you know we all have little vials of salicylic acid kept on our dressers um but i'm going to ask you a question as an expert what do you think of internet beauty advice do you think it's legitimate <laughs> so it's very entertaining of course yeah. and it has actually pushed us uh, skin experts to push our boundaries and come out and talk about it because yeah. beauty and information related to beauty and skin has to be backed by science it has to be backed by research research you uh, cannot just simply start talking about something unless you have proper science backing it or you don't have the experience to talk about it just because you are asked to do it or sponsored content is there out there so it's very difficult yeah. for the viewers to choose at what is true and what is false so it's very important now for all the influencers out there all the internet out there giving the information to talk about the studies that have made them realize that what they are talking about or if the content is sponsored please go ahead and mention it that, that that is what they're suggesting it can do but it can be you know still it has to be backed up by science so i love inter- internet and the tiktoks and the instagram reels for yeah. the entertainment they provide but then you always have to use your brain and when it comes to your skin it's the largest Just organ of your body and it's the yeah. largest organ of your body you cannot rely on um, knowledge which is not backed by science to be taking care of your skin and it is evolving you're aging every minute i generally tell my patients since you're aging the moment you're born so yeah. it's uh, as simple as that and you have to take care of your skin it's not a quick thing that in and out is the first thing that people will also notice about you so we are generally very careful about uh, what we put on i'm sure you must have known the amount of questions you get when someone sitting opposite you but then Absolutely. when we see things on the internet we are so tempted to try it <laughs> 
absolutely enjoy it it's entertainment and, that's it yeah that's it um so okay so now i'm going to ask you a couple so lots of skincare trends go viral right um, we have everything from k beauty which is amazing but may not suit our skin things like that which are going on that i i need you to tell me what you think about them and whether they work or not okay so certain beauty trends i like and certain yeah. beauty trends that i don't like let's just talk about like that so of course this k beauty which you spoke about hena i have personally loved k beauty because i was in korea for a training and then i loved the way their skin was it was beautiful glass skin as that that's what yes. they say and the reason behind that glass skin is actually layering of the products hmm. they layer their products and lock in the moisture inside the skin so that when the light hits the skin it reflects back it like a glass and gives you that shiny appearance so that is the k beauty actually all about it is great but then you can have to choose when you can do that you can't do that in a humid environment or environment which is really really causing acne on your skin you cannot lock in so much of those products and that's where a trend like skin minimalism would you know be more sufficient be beneficial yeah. yeah so might as well pick products which are more active which are more beneficial which are multi utility rather than indulging in a 10 step beauty regime and not able to benefit your skin so my take would be like using a face wash which has some exfoliant inside it definitely go for it use a vitamin c serum which has hyaluronic acid inside it go for it it will hydrate and it will also make a vitamin c more potent use a moisturizer which has um a sunblock of at least 30 inside or a sunblock which has moisturizing properties also together with it these are some multitasking products which you can always use to make your skin care more upgraded exactly. and up to the mark yeah very simple another uh, thing that um, the trending thing which came out was the blue light you know we all have i was just our, getting to the yeah. same thing i was to you opening my mouth to ask you about that like there's you know there's so much fear about blue light and blue light products and now there's a new entrant in the market cuz called blue light protective makeup so are mm-hmm. these things you really need to be worried about or is this just ma- so about if you over exposing your skin or yourself to the digital devices then definitely you have to take care of yourself a little bit more so be it your eyes so people have started using glasses to protect their eyes from the over exposure and the harms that it can do or be it using your sun blocks which will also blue light protect it So what happens with blue light is they have high energy variable light which is mm-hmm. is causing also sun damage like effects right? right although it is much more lesser intensity but more and more we are using the digital devices more effects can be seen so when it happens it generally is just hitting on your skin and that is causing the free radical damage on the face which causes sun spots early aging all of that So you can definitely use a sunblock which is also blue light protective and even when you're sitting inside if you're using your sunblock every 2 to 3 hours that is great make sure that you're also having lots and lots of water in your diet include oral sunblocks like um, lycopene in your tomatoes like carrots these are yeah. all oral sunblocks that you can start having and to make your skin in your kitchen yeah. literally yeah so you can use them every day to make your skin also more um, robust to fight the sun and as on damage uh and what do you think about peel off masks like they are so satisfying on instagram and they look amazing you know when you're pulling them off but are they actually damaging to the skin in some level are you being too so i'll tell you you know they're great stress busters let me tell yeah. you to even watch those videos <laughs> with you know the zoomed in uh, yeah pictures when they show those peel off and it's actually well, taking away all the things but it is so abrasive so so abrasive those rubber peel off mask are the strict no no if you talk to a skin expert because that is also peeling off the natural microbiome of the skin is being taken away so your skin on the top is also protecting you from the sun damage or the outer environment and if you are just peeling it off that abrasively your skin is going to be raw under it your skin mm. is going to be more prone to sun damage or to irritation or to allergies so please stay away from them absolutely yeah, it's content, a strict but it's not skin care <laughs> absolutely not so as i said entertainment that's it entertainment entertainment um and what do you think about acne patches because again lots of people have been using stickers all over their face do you think mm-hmm. they are effective or 
So yeah, so hydrocolloidal acne patches are something which is also trending. And in fact, I also did a few stories about this uh, just a week or two back. In fact, I have I generally break out whenever I indulge in sugar. So mm -hmm. that's always the case, and mm -hmm. that's where I tried it on, and I was myself very much um, happily surprised that it does work. Then I did a lot of research on it, and what I got to know was that it only is providing a safe, sterile environment for the acne. You know, so when you're going out, your acne, you might pick it, or you might expose it to sun, which will cause scarring, or, or you, you might, might pat on lots of makeup, which might yes. aggravate. So yeah. it is providing a sterile environment for the acne to heal. That's all that it is doing, and it does actually expedite the healing of the acne. So if you have one or two acne which are fast filled and which is bothering you, you can absolutely go ahead and use them. There is no harm. Okay. Um... Speaking but the downside skin. is it can make uh, your skin irritated if you overuse it. And skin. super dry, is it? Is yes, it dry? yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, okay, now the last one in this particular series that I'm coming to is acids. A mm -hmm. lot of us, we, you and I have had this conversation when we met uh, at your Mumbai clinic once, but uh, skincare acids are again all the rage. People mm -hmm. are using glycolic, high levels of glycolic acids in their toners. You use mm -hmm. BHA, BHA peels. Yeah. Um, mistake or are you actually doing it right? So you are doing it right if you are doing it under the supervision of a doctor because definitely doing some sort of exfoliation once or twice in a week is something that we also suggest mm -hmm. because your skin has a certain cell turnover which slows down with age. Say for example, uh, a young girl who is 13, 14, her skin cell turnover is much quicker maybe after every 20, 30 days. But as you start to age, it becomes a month, then 40 days and 50 days. So your skin, your dead skin is just sitting on the face. So these exfoliators definitely help in removing that uh, dead skin and makes your skin, new skin cell turnover happen. That's how they work. But using them daily, again, the downside is it will make your skin more uh, sensitive to the sun damage, to the environmental stresses and allergic to even makeup that you're putting. So use hmm. them under the doctor's supervision and maybe start using it only once or twice in a week and start with a small amount. Don't get overexcited when you're using it. So the yeah. right way to use Use it once or twice in a week. Always make sure that you use your sunblock in your skincare routine when you're doing all of these acids in your ritual and also moisturize your skin because it can also hide, uh, dehydrate and dry up the skin quite a lot. Fair enough. Uh, when it comes to home remedies, again, that was something that picked up so much last year. And living, in, <laughs> living in a country like India, I mean, you know, we, we all grow up uh, listening to these kind of things. But as, but, but as an expert, but as a doormat, like, have you spotted any mistakes or do you have any advice on what not to do when it comes to that? Can I like that honest? question. What not yeah. to do? Because what to do is like a very big it's um, out topic there. altogether. Yeah. 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 So what not to do is don't put anything that you want to put inside the body. So not many times people get very, you know, stickler about, oh, this yogurt I'm not going to eat. It's not smelling right. Let me put it on my face. No, don't do that. Because if you can't eat it, you cannot put it on your face. It is not meant to be like that. Second of all, these DIYs are meant to be quick. You have to make it and you have to use it right there. And then. You cannot yeah. leave it in the fridge to be used the next day. So you have to use it fresh. Third of all, stay away from actives like lemon and turmeric and apple cider vinegar. These three are such strong actives. They can leave your skin more photosensitive. They can lead to rashes. And believe me, I have consulted patients during this time who have actually got a lot of reactions because of these three ingredients. So lemon I can juice, imagine because lemon juice is like a big ingredient to most brightening recipes. Yes. So you know? absolutely stay away from it. Lemon juice, cinnamon, and the third was uh, apple cider vinegar. Apple so cider three of vinegar. these things, please stay away. And again, the last point is always do a small patch test. Not one thing fits everyone. So a good idea is to do a small patch test right here to see if it's suiting you. And then last of all, make sure you understand your skincare before you stick to DIYs. If you're doing all exfoliants with DHAs and BHAs or even using a retinol and you're doing a DIY on top, you're actually going to harm your skin and your skincare will go for a toss. Hmm. Many times I get patients in my clinic saying, oh, dog, you gave us that cream, this cream, but it doesn't suit us. And then when I start talking to them, they said, oh, we did that Multani Mitti DIY, that Basin DIY. That is hardcore abrasive on your skin. That is physically exfoliating your skin. You cannot combine both the things. So understand your skincare like a science from what you are eating to what you're putting and what you are making or experimenting to put on the face. 
Yeah, I feel like a lot of times we go back and blame doctors, but we tend to hide what we're doing behind the scenes, you know. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And that happens. I mean, I I feel like even I must have done that sometime in my life. It's only <laughs> now that we realize these are mistakes. We have to make a good team together. That's important. I know. <laughs> uh so clearly we've 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 spent a lot of time understanding how to understand your skin and do it right and as we um sort of hit a seasonal transition right now we're moving from the winter to summer would you uh, be able to guide us on how to uh, renew your skincare wardrobe sure that's one of my favorite questions also now that summers are starting so it's very important that you switch from the creamy cleansers to more foamy cleansers now or more gel based cleansers which leave your face uh, face fresh mm-hmm. don't use overly um, uh, over extremes of temperature water like hot water or extremely cold water when washing the face it has to be normal uh, temperature water so more foamy face washes or gel based cleansers followed by toners which are more fresh in nature so you can okay. use some glycolic acid based toner have nothing against it but you should know where you are on the skincare regime followed by some serums the serums in summers are very important to be vitamin c based because that is not only protecting your skin from the sun damage but it is also helping in treating the sun damage so the dual um, response that it is giving you yeah. yeah you can also choose a gel based vitamin c serum if your skin is not very uh, much okay with using oil based serums so you can use a gel based vitamin c serum as well followed by an under eye cream and then a moisturizer which can also be a gel based so there is a big myth that oily skin people don't need a moisturizer, moisturizer. that is absolutely wrong all mm. skin types need a moisturizer even if your skin is oily you can go for a gel based moisturizer because so many times people are over exfoliating and their oil glands are working more harder to produce more oil so that is why to make your skin comfortable you should use some kind of moisturizer daily so using more gentler things like gel based moisturizer and then followed by a sunblock which is again supposed to be sweat resistant if you end up sweating a lot on your face or a physical sunblock if your skin is really sensitive to chemical components and use those sunblocks at least 30 every 2 to 3 hours and i also spoke about you know the latest two finger rule for the sunblock so that you apply enough sunblock Many I people don't even know. I graduated to one finger. Now you're telling me two fingers, so I'm going to keep two. this in mind as well. So two finger is important, but if you're putting one finger here, that would mean it is only SPF 15. If you're applying SPF 30, right? Ah, okay. So Got you're it. reducing the SPF portion to it. So yeah. make sure you apply two finger full of sunblock all over your face, including your ears and the neck. and the back and you have to, yeah. yes and you have to reapply it every 2 to 3 hours because sunblock loses its activity you can reapply using powders you can reapply using sprays you can sprays. reapply using the blender on your face there are various ways to so that was my next question because i hear this from a lot of experts but what a lot of readers come back to us with is if i have a full face of makeup on how do i reapply it you know are so there the powders any formulas available. Yeah. Yeah, they are very easy powders available which you can just brush on your face. Okay, so that much is fine. It doesn't have Absolutely. to be a cream that goes over it. Absolutely. And also, you know, it's a great idea to invest in certain things which are also SPF protected physically. Like hmm. if you're going out for a shoot, use an umbrella which is SPF protected. Use a scarf which is SPF protected with a thick material. So these things further add on giving you physical protection from the sun rays. Fair. Well, now I think even with technology Uh, even there are a lot of makeup products that come with a small yeah. amount of so SPF layering of the sunblock is also important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I'm going to ask you one question, which I think a lot of people can benefit from because uh, I want to deep dive into your personal skincare routine. What does an expert do on a daily basis to make sure that they are protected? That's a very good question again. You know, <laughs> so as I said, there are no shortcuts to beauty, and yeah. no matter how tired I would be, be it two o'clock at night or anything, I never ever sleep with makeup on. I do yeah. my skincare Even routine to the T. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my thing. I can be falling thing. over, but I need to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, I never ever indulge in a wipe to remove the makeup, mm-hmm. but uh, I do the proper cleansing, everything properly. 
So we start from the morning routine itself. So as I've spoken about the summer skin care, I do all of the steps, and I understand okay. my skin every day of the month because even my skin changes with the days. In yeah. women, hormones are very complex. So your skin might turn more oily towards your periods, or when you're overindulging in alcohol and sugar. So you need to understand what transition or what symptoms is your skin showing, and change your skin care routine accordingly. So be it washing or applying the serums or under eye cream, moisturizing, sunblock. I do all of it. In hmm. fact, because I've been doing it and I'm a skincare expert here, so I make a cocktail of serums for myself. I apply hyaluronic acid serum separately and then a vitamin C serum separately. So we have launched our new skincare regime, which is the Dr. G Skincare Expert yes. Skincare. So we are doing all of it because an under eye cream, line. yeah, it's, an yeah. under eye cream which is for the morning is more for the under eye dark circles. This is an under eye cream which has to be used at night is more for the anti aging purpose. Okay. So yeah. you have to use this permutation combinations. I definitely use retinols at least once or twice in a week. I don't. over indulge in them because my skin is slightly more sensitive so i use a combination of all of this to make my skin happy but again there are no shortcuts hydrating exercising meditating playing with your kids and keeping yeah. those happy hormones always help great thank you so much i love this session because i feel like it it, it was more like an anti you know like you, you we learn so much about what not to do because we hear we hear so much about what you can but you don't know where you're going wrong Absolutely. so thank you for taking us thank through you. the flip side of uh, skin care uh, this was dr gitika mittal who has just spent a great deal of time telling us what not to do in our skin care routines uh, thank you so much for joining us for the femina gracia virtual beauty carnival and uh, i can it's safe to say that there's a lot to take away from this session so thank, thank you hina thanks for this thanks guys thank you